were 15, your life changed yeah. big time. What was that time like when you, you went to the doctors, obviously, and found out you had a really aggressive cancer in your knee? Yeah, I mean, it was tough, obviously, but I think the hardest thing for us was the two years of being told that it was growing pains and to be told that it was, wow. you know, I, I love sport and I would go to netball and I'd, I'd strap my knee and they'd tell me that it was fine and eventually had to give up netball and obviously I loved it. Yeah. But it was the time that I went in there again and they, and they did a scan and they found a probably what would have been a small sized apricot inside my knee and they said it's still a cyst, you can let it go. And even then I was like... Uh, you know, I'll get a couple of weeks off school. It'll be fun to have, yeah. to have minor surgery. And, and lucky I did. And lucky I decided to do that because that's when the doctor sat me down and, and told me to bring my parents in and said, unfortunately, we have some bad news that we found a rare form of cancer. And obviously your world just gets turned upside down within a matter of minutes. And as soon as you hear cancer, automatically you think, am I going to die? Yeah. And, you know, being 15, you have no idea really what cancer is, only that it kills. Because 15 for any girl is tough. Like, it's hard yeah. to navigate your way through those years. So getting delivered news like this, you were told you can either have um, it amputated yeah. or you can have, um, uh, you know, operations, but you don't know if it'll spread. Yeah. So what was it like making that decision? Oh, it was, it was one of the toughest decision, decisions of my life. And to be sat down and told that, you know, you can have your leg amputated above your knee or radical surgery to try and remove the cancer and most likely still have cancer. Mm. Uh, it was tough and I remember looking at the doctor and telling him I'd rather die than have my leg amputated. Mm. You know, being 15 and worrying about what you look like. The unknown was probably the scariest part for me because I didn't know what life would be like with one leg. No. So I said to the doctor I'd rather die than have my leg amputated and, and that was my final decision that day and I went home and obviously my parents and the doctor both wanted me to have my leg amputated but it was my decision. Uh, and I went home and, and Googled the cancer and realised how bad it was and how aggressive it was. And the people that chose not to have the amputation, 99% of them died. And wow. I was very lucky that I had a, had a great group of friends and a boyfriend at the time and, and told them all that, you know, maybe, maybe I do want to live. And I'm um, very lucky that, you know, not many people maybe don't have that decision and second chance at life from cancer. So it changed my mind completely. And so when you made up your mind, how long was it? before you then had it amputated? About three days. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I went in and he told me that, you know, now you've made the decision, we're going to schedule it for a few days later. And I think those, those few days were probably the worst days of my life. Yeah. And there was nothing really wrong with my leg. It was just the cancer inside it. So knowing that I was going to go into hospital with, you know, two perfectly fine legs and then come out with one, that was, uh, yeah, some of the hardest times. And, I remember the night before my friends in Geelong came over for a barbecue and everybody mm. brought presents and, and was there for me and sort of had a little bit of a party but at the end of the day, you know, they got to go home and I was the one going to the hospital the next day mm. so it was, it was tough but I had a great group of, of people around me.